I was informed before the show that we are uh, over capacity here, so I am going to have to kick uh, one person out, uh, and uh, it's going to be you. Uh, I, yes, you. Yes, if you can just head out, and uh, we'll get the show started. Uh, take your take your chair. We don't need the extra chair if he's already uh, yeah. out. So go ahead. Thank you. All right, let's, wasting a lot of time here. All right. Um, so. Sorry, just some housekeeping stuff. Also, uh, just as a rule, you know, don't don't take your cell phones out. We don't want uh, people recording this, bootlegging it on the street. Uh, a, lot, a lot of money in in Tom Clark stand-up specials. Uh, so, um, so yeah, nothing like that. Uh, so no cell phone. No thing to distract. Like, sir, I'm noticing over here you have a uh, looks to be a beach ball. Uh, <laughs> That's sort of what I'm talking about, is having a beach ball during the show. You know, if we got bored or something. Well, <laughs> you're not going to get bored. It's going to be a very entertaining special. So um, I'd like, could I have that? Uh, it's like a backup plan if we need it. No, I, uh, <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time. I think I, think I got it handled. Okay. So. Well, Dave, you're, All right. you're handled. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, We'll put that and we'll return that after the show. Um, I shouldn't have to announce that, um, but no, no beach balls uh, during the show. Like one thing I wanted to do when I when I did this uh, special is I wanted to have some like cool like I noticed like in all the Netflix specials and stuff there's like a, a, a sky cam sort of thing that will go you know like shoot through it's like a Tom Cruise movie so I wanted to do something like that I, I we didn't have it in the budget so uh, what we did is we uh, we st strapped a camera to the director's son's head and uh, actually could you come out here Mateo everybody. <laughs> Mateo. So, all right, don't don't hog the spotlight. So, uh, Mateo, if you could just do a quick little run through, this will be kind of cool. Uh, yeah, well, there we go. So, very cool. And then, yeah, you, oh, you got me, sure. Uh, all right, that doesn't look uncomfortable. All right. <laughs> Also, in, in addition to doing this special, I'm currently doing my big one-man show. Uh, it's every Tuesday night over at the uh, Hollywood Bowl. Uh, well, last week, Tuesday, was the first week. Uh, 13 people showed up. I lost a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, so, uh, ad admission was $6, it's now $11,000 uh, to get in. And uh, the show is called Turn on the Lights. It's Clark in here. <laughs> so please come out. I'm, I'm big time in the hole on that one. Um, but I wanted to shoot it and uh, shoot my special in North Hollywood because it is the, the Canada of Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> and also, I think my insurance agent is here. Is that right, my insurance agent? <laughs> well, there he is. Yeah, Darren Hassan. Darren Hassan. He will. He will lie about anything. Uh, <laughs> that's your shout out, Darren. Uh, no, but I, I hope that we got insurance on this place because I'm gonna blow the roof off of it. <laughs> I'm originally from Milwaukee, uh, currently live here in Los Angeles. Glad to be out of Milwaukee because people in Milwaukee are so fake. Uh, <laughs> people in Milwaukee are always like, oh no, the factory closed down. How am I going to feed my family? <laughs> Stop thinking about yourself just for a minute, you know? But I flew there, I had to go through uh, airport security. Have you done this recently, right? They, they do that full body scan, right? So they can see your uh, wiener and stuff. Uh, I don't know if that's the purpose. I usually just take it out. And, uh, <laughs> my good uh, not the whole thing, just, just the balls. Uh, not a weirdo. Um, but I figured out a way to get out of the full body scan. Here's what you do if you want to get out of the full body scan creepily ask for the full body scan. 
just walk out of the TSA guy. Yeah, I'd like the uh, full body scan, please. <laughs> Like, no, he's good, he's good. He's not a terrorist. Get out of here, weirdo. I like to do this when they're patting me down. I like to go, you'll never find it. <laughs> that tickles, yeah. I always, uh, I always fly Southwest. You ever fly Southwest? Yeah. Uh, I, I got 100 bucks for that. Oh boy, what happened? Oh, I thought there was trouble. All right, take it easy, lady. Uh, <laughs> No, I flew, uh, I flew Southwest, and I, now in Southwest, they don't, they don't board you by, uh, by like your, your, your class or whatever. They board you in groups. So I'm always in C group, which is always like the dumb people who forgot. <laughs> you have to go, oh, I didn't know. And then, um, so I got on the plane, and then the, uh, the flight attendant, she's like, oh, geez, what's going on? It's like, <laughs> what the hell's going on? Some sort of signal going on here? You guys? <laughs> And a third person attacks while I'm distracted. Oh, this lady's out of here on that one. I, uh, there is some, there's some bottle action going on. I, uh, <laughs> glad we bought bottles in here. Uh, not distract during the show? No, 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 I don't think so. People kick over bottles. Like, All right. Um, <laughs> folks, this joke's gonna crush. Um, <laughs> No, but they board in groups. So I get on the plane, and the, uh, the, the stewardess, she says, uh, you can sit in any empty seat. Yeah, I know how seats work, right? <laughs> now, Walker, can I sit on this man? Is that all right to sit on a man? A lady? Can I sit on a, on a child? No? All right. Oh, oh, empty seat. OK, I get how it works. Like in the, in the land, OK. Um, And uh, I always sit in the exit row, right? You get the extra leg room, right? They always have to ask you that question, right? They become very serious. They walk over and like, are you prepared to fill the duties for sitting in the exit row? <laughs> you mean to scream hysterically and shit my pants? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Start her up, Capitan. Uh, I went to the bathroom on the plane, and on the, uh, on the bathroom stall, they had all the pictures of all the things you couldn't throw in the toilet, you know? So like, it's like standards of like paper towels and diapers, you know? Then out of nowhere, this had a picture of a comb. <laughs> Just throwing a comb in the toilet. <laughs> Are there a lot of Fonzies on this flight? And, you know, I am done! <laughs> Won't be needing that comb anymore. <laughs> and I'll be damned if I'm lugging that thing back to my seat. <laughs> it has done its duty. Uh, <laughs> that's a bonus joke right there, folks. Uh, <laughs> duty. I always get that person that wants to talk to you the entire flight. I get that person they want to talk to the entire flight, right? I'm just trying to watch a little movie on my computer. This lady's asking me questions the whole time, you know? Are you gonna watch porn the whole flight? <laughs> <laughs> Where are your pants? Shut up! <laughs> trying to follow the plot. Uh, <laughs> Lived in Milwaukee, and now, now I live in Los Angeles. Live in kind of a uh, dangerous neighborhood. Actually, there's a Hispanic gang in the area, or as they like to call themselves, uh, cholos, uh, which sounds like a delicious snack treat. Uh, sure, it's like a deep fried pastry. You put sugar on it. Uh, that's a churro. That's a churro. Uh, do not put sugar on a cholo. It'll confuse them for a minute, and you make a run for it. Uh, if they're diabetic, they have a seizure. Like, no mames. Um, <laughs> but now you got to be careful. I was at the grocery store the other day. I see one of these uh, cholo fellas, and he's got one of these uh, teardrop tattoos. You ever seen those? Which are just adorable. Uh, but my buddy says that means he killed somebody in the joint. Yeah. But you know what I think it means? I think it means someone needs a hug. <laughs> Turns out I was wrong, did not want a hug. Uh, no. You know, if they have the filled in teardrop tattoo, it means they actually did kill somebody. And if five of them are filled in, they can get a free car wash. Uh, uh, good boy. Uh, um, any gangs here tonight? Do we have any gangs? Uh, 
Be careful of the gangs. I don't know if you know this. If you're driving at night, you see someone with their headlights off. You're not flashing with your headlights. It's some sort of gang initiation, you know? So now if I'm driving at night, I see someone with their headlights off, you know, I, I shoot them. Um, <laughs> Why well, risk it, right? Safety first. Uh, that old lady could have been packing for all I know. Yeah. <laughs> I am not in a gang. Don't let the uh, Target outfit fool you. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is Target. It's Italian. Uh, Massimo, I believe, was the designer's name. Uh, Massimo Morona. Um, Massimo is an Italian word meaning under $20. Uh, no, I. Uh, I try to be nice, you know, you should be nice to people, you know. Don't, don't be too nice, right? Like, like if you're at like a, uh, like a mall or something, somebody holds a door open for you, but you're really far away, and you're like, holy man, I'm gonna have to jog. I better stretch out. And you feel obligated to make that big 20 yard dash to the door so Mr. Helpful can feel good about himself. It's not even the place you wanna go into in the first place. Like, ah, oh, thanks a lot for having me in to stop by Lane Bryant. Uh, that's great. <laughs> I try to be nice and it gets awkward, you know? Like, you ever go to shake somebody's hand, they don't return the favor? Suddenly your hand's out there in no man's land, you know? I never know what to do, right? So I'll just start tickling the guy. <laughs> and I'll blow on his stomach. <laughs> then I go right in for the interview, right? <laughs> You ever gotta shake somebody's hand they don't have a hand? <laughs> That's awkward, right? Just do what I do, let's go, paper, rock, I win! All right, get over it, I gotta, I gotta win. Here's what you do if you never wanna shake somebody's hand ever again, here's what you do. Immediately after you shake their hand, smell your hand. <laughs> no, my pleasure. You gotta have fun, folks. That's the message here. Have fun. Here's something fun you can do. Next time you're at a coffee shop, you see somebody working on their laptop, set your laptop right across from theirs and go, B7, B7. <laughs> Hit or miss, what do we got? Or I like to do this, if I see somebody log into their Facebook page, I like to get their name, take a picture of the back of their head, make that my profile picture. <laughs> and then send them a friend request. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Like, hey, really buddies, yeah. I like to argue with people on Facebook. You ever argue with people? Everybody argues, right? That is the best. If I like to get like 50 comments going back and forth and then delete all my comments. <laughs> So they just look like a crazy person arguing with themselves. <laughs> oh, there you go. I was at this coffee shop today and I'm standing in line. You ever standing in line somewhere and someone stands really close behind you? You, know? you can feel their hot, creepy breath against your neck. It's like, do you want to cuddle? What are you doing? So here's what I like to do when that happens, right? I'll just lean back and whisper in their ear. I hope this line lasts forever. <laughs> That usually works, yeah. <laughs> Except for today, the guy leaned forward. So do I. <laughs> I hate standing. You ever accidentally start a line? You know, <laughs> you're just standing around at the bank waiting for a friend. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, people are lining up behind you. Is this a line for the loans? Yep. <laughs> I don't care. I got three hours to kill. I'll screw up your day. <laughs> Are you ever standing in line, the couple in front of you is making out? Oof. I don't even know what to do, right? So I'll just start softly stroking the girl's hair. <laughs> I'm next. <laughs> That's why I got on this line. <laughs> I ain't standing in the elevator. You ever on the elevator by yourself and then somebody else gets on, right? You guys gotta go to those neutral corners, you know, like, like you're gonna wrestle or something, right? <laughs> You guys get that weird greetings, like a combination of hello and how are you, but it makes no sense. Like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> You'll actually respond the same way. <laughs> I once 
just went up 19 floors with this guy. Didn't say a word to me. Gets off the elevator. He's like, see you later. <laughs> see me later? Are you following me? I had one lady get off the elevator, and she's like, thank you. I didn't invent the elevator, lady. <laughs> I think of anything, once you get off the elevator, just insult the person, right? That's the end of the relationship. What do you care, right? <laughs> just get off the elevator. Your mother's a whore. Uh... <laughs> Meanwhile, the guy in the elevator is like, hey, my mother isn't a whore. How would you say that? <laughs> How do you know she's a whore? Oh. <laughs> Here's something fun. Next time you're on the elevator, the person asks you, what floor do you want? Just look at him and go, same floor as you. <laughs> Or I could do this as the elevator doors are closing. I'll just start running toward it with an out of order sign. Wait! <laughs> You're gonna die! <laughs> Ever get off on the wrong floor? It's embarrassing, right? You guys feel you need to have to explain it to everyone else in the elevator? They could care less. Like, oh, I thought that was three, but it's only two. <laughs> I didn't know when numerically. <laughs> I'm from Milwaukee. Yeah. I'll tell you guys this. Uh, I actually started out in the business as a uh, heckler. And I was actually one of the first hecklers to use the phrase, you suck. And sometimes when I'm performing, I hear somebody shout out, you suck. And I'll be like, thanks for remembering. And, <laughs> Actually, this would kind of help me just to kind of get more comfortable. Just on the count of three, everybody could just shout out, you suck. And I think it'll kind of take me back to the old days and just sort of make me feel more at home. So on the count of three, let's do that. Here we go. One, two, three. You suck! You're the worst. <laughs> a little far. Uh, some of you that felt very real. Uh, I, I regret doing that. I regret doing that. Uh, have a good night. Um, what's that? Oh, uh, that's that lady again. Oh, boy. Glug, glug. Uh, oh, man. I love boozing up. You know what my favorite part of drinking is? My favorite part of drinking? Vomiting. No, I like vomiting because I think it's the closest you get to becoming a monster, right? You ever start throwing up? You know, you're like... I'm the wolf man. <laughs> I'll tell you, the, the part I hate is uh, at the end of the night when the bouncer has to yell at everybody. Right? You ever go out? They always got to yell at people. They're like, got to get out of here. Come on, you got to get out of here. Come on, you got to get out of here. more effective if they just start crying, you know? I don't think they should yell, I think they should whisper it. Wouldn't that be more effective? You know, they just walk up to your group and be like, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> just look at your friends, we gotta get the fuck out of here. I don't know what's gonna happen. Some shit's about to get <laughs> Oh, everyone, people want to applaud so bad. And uh, <laughs> the rest of you guys are holding them back. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, that's nice. That's a good whistle. So let's see here. I, uh, any birthdays here? Anyone celebrating anything here? Birthday-wise? No, no birthdays. September? Good enough. <laughs> Do you, are you honest about your age? That's good. Well, how old are you going to be? 56. 56. So 56. <laughs> But when you live in Los Angeles, you always have to lie about your age. And the problem with lying about your age is that eventually you have to do math, right? Because people be like, how old are you? 31. What year did you graduate high school? Uh, 
Yeah, I didn't go. I, uh, I was homeschooled. I was homeschooled. Um, uh, I, I, I was always bad at math in school. Like, I always had trouble with, like, the multiplication tables. So what I would do, I, was just, I would associate the numbers with things that I knew. So take the problem, like, seven times seven, I would think. Seven castaways on Gilligan's Island. Who was the star of Gilligan's Island? Bob Denver. Denver's in Colorado. When you think of Colorado, what do you think of? Mountains. Mountains in Spanish is montañas, which is spelled the same as Montana. Who's the most famous Montana? Joe Montana, who played for? 49ers. Uh, <laughs> No, this is a, a good, interesting thing about my family. I actually come from a long line of uh, show business people. Actually, my great, great, great grandfather was actually a Civil War reenactor uh, during the Civil War. <laughs> and my parents are older, uh, older than me. Uh, if your parents are younger, you're probably adopted. <laughs> But uh, they are older. And the thing about having older parents is, is uh, the thing that you take for granted, that's like their story for the entire week. You know, so I'll call them and be like, hey, Dad, how you doing? Well, your mother and I, we went to McDonald's, and I had a sausage McMuffin, and your mother had an egg McMuffin, and I ate the whole thing, and your mother ate half, and she's saving the other half for lunch. <laughs> that's quite a tale there, Dad. Uh, <laughs> Well, we also had coffee. Well, let's leave that as a cliffhanger for next week. <laughs> Very interesting. Now, it was hard growing up, because actually growing up, my parents were very homophobic. Very homophobic. I'm sorry, they're very homophobic. They hated words that sounded the same, but meant something completely different. <laughs> My dad would say, God created Adam and Eve, not sail and sail. Now, <laughs> uh, here's my thing, guys. I, I like gay people, because gay people get to call their loved ones partners, you know? Like they're detectives or something, right? <laughs> They're like, I'm Troy, this is my partner, Randy. We're gonna solve this murder. <laughs> then we're gonna do it. <laughs> they told you guys, you guys put your phones away, that's good. That's hard, right, not to have your phone with you. I, uh... <laughs> I feel like you're watching a whole different show. <laughs> watching cat videos. <laughs> Alright, um, let's see, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, I remember. Uh, cell phone, cell phone. Here's the thing I don't like with cell phone. I don't like when people text me and I don't like when people use the LOL, the laugh out loud. You ever that friend, they overuse it? They'll send you a text like, hey, how you doing? LOL. <laughs> really, you're laughing a lot at how you doing? Hey, you're with that maniac on the street. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> How about this weather? <laughs> All right, take it easy, lunatic. Huh? And don't abbreviate everything. Ever that friend, they abbreviate everything? I got a text on Valentine's Day. It said, hey, happy VD. <laughs> and a merry gonorrhea to you too, sir. <laughs> or you ever get really drunk? That's it. Uh, <laughs> Now, you ever get really drunk and instead of programming someone's name in your phone, it's just a vague description of them, right? We have that one name on our phone, you're scrolling through, you're like, who the hell's fat Asian guy? <laughs> and it's worse with girls, right? You're gonna call that girl the next day, you're like, hi, is, uh, is Big Tits there? <laughs> is this Mr. Tits? How are you doing? Huh? Right. This is a fun joke you can play on a buddy. If your buddy's getting really drunk, here's what you do. Go into their phone, change your contact name to, like, God, and then call him at, like, 4 a.m. <laughs> it's waking from a dead sleep. They're like, what the hell? I don't have enough minutes. <laughs> Are you something fun? Next time somebody calls you and it's the wrong number, here's what you do. They ask you for someone who isn't there, you ask them for someone who isn't there. <laughs> so like, is Bill there? Like, no, is Todd over there? 
Well, the search continues, huh? All right, good luck. <laughs> I am, uh, I got married, uh, two years ago I got married. <laughs> yeah, it is great, she is uh, a rescue. <laughs> and it's about giving back, you guys. Uh, she still gets spooked by loud noises, but, uh, oh, oh, geez. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Crazed fan had come through the curtain. Like, ah! uh, it was just a child. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> threw me off. I said, "No, I'll bring him out any time, and I'll, I'll react to it fine." Uh, nope, nope. <laughs> See, this is a cool comedian. They can just take a sip of water, and it looks effortless. <laughs> Can we get a lower stool here? Uh, <laughs> it's a perfect. My wife is actually a bartender, speaking of stools. Um, <laughs> no, and that's the thing, so we never argue. Uh, instead, I just leave her bad Yelp reviews. <laughs> so it'll be like, food is great, she could listen more. Uh, <laughs> Who's been married like a long time? Who's been married like over uh, 30? Oh, the, oh, right there. Look at that. She's raising it like she's ashamed. Uh, <laughs> what's your name, ma'am? Janine. Janine, and you, sir? Bob. Bob. Janine and Bob, how long have you guys been together? <laughs> they don't even care anymore. I'm, yeah. 35 years. That's amazing. That's awesome. Uh, eh, I like one guy was gonna try to start it, and then everyone else, like, nope, we're jealous. Uh, where did you propose, Bob? Where, where was the proposal? I asked him. Oh, you asked him! Yeah. I like a guy who plays hard to get. Uh, so you proposed to him? Where would you go to propose? The couch. The couch. <laughs> ah, what a romantic tale. Um, he's just finishing his TV dinner. Uh, what do you want, woman? Um, he's on the couch, and what did you say? You just. So, are we going to get married or what? Oh. <laughs> so, are we going to get married or what? <laughs> and Bob, how could you resist that, huh? Um, <laughs> I always think the place you propose to somebody is also the same place where you might murder someone. <laughs> it's always like on a hiking trail, but near a cliff, you know? I think in case it doesn't work out, right? Like, will you marry me? No. See ya. <laughs> Do you still surprise your lady, Bob, after uh, 35 years? Probably not. No, not at all. <laughs> 35 years, no, you gotta surprise your lady. I'm not talking flowers or breakfast in bed. Here's what you do. Next time you lean in for a kiss, head butter. <laughs> women love that. Women love that. I, I read that, that women love a guy with a foreign accent. Women love this, right? A nice guy with a foreign What's your favorite foreign accent you could get any guy in the whole world? Um, <laughs> she got very upset. French. French, a little arrivederci, huh? <laughs> That's Italian, I know, but uh, I was really expecting French. Okay, let's let's stick to the script, everybody, if we could. <laughs> who else is who else is married here? Who else? You got you married, sir? And then, where where did you propose? San Diego in a hotel. San Diego in a hotel, perfect place for murder. They clean it up for you after. <laughs> uh, and how'd you guys meet? Friends for thirty years. Oh, friends for thirty. <laughs> Sure, give it a good three decades, I always say. Don't want to rush into anything. Three decades of friendship? Yeah. You're like a young guy. How old are you? 
47. 47, so since you were 17 and you were like in grade school. Uh, <laughs> What's up? <laughs> yeah, it's a Chevy Nova, come on, get in. Follow you forever. Uh, you can't say no forever. Uh, well, that is pretty sure. Give him a round of applause. Thirty years. How did you make it happen for 30 years and you just waited that long? I was done dating all his friends. <laughs> You're done dating all his friends. Oh, boy. <laughs> Let's get her out of here. Let's get her out of here. Uh, we're one over again, ma'am. Get out. Yeah, just... <laughs> I feel like I've ruined a relationship here. Uh, no, it's fine. Did you have a good line? Wait, what did you finally say to her? To, did you have like a good like pickup line or something you said to her? No, I, I really didn't. <laughs> Just like, are you done yet? <laughs> I'll be here waiting for you. Still got the Nova. Uh, I, would, uh, I would always screw it up, you know? I'd walk up to the girl and be like, excuse me, are you an angel or did something just die in here? <laughs> One show, I asked the audience, I said, anyone have a good pickup line? The guy shouted out, get in the truck, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I did. Uh, <laughs> no, I, uh, I think the best job, if you want to meet the ladies, best job you can have, singer in a band, right? Because when you're a singer in a band, you can like, dedicate a song to a girl. You can't dedicate a joke to a girl, right? <laughs> I can be like, let's dedicate this next joke to a very special young lady out there. <laughs> this farmer's screwing a pig. And uh, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and I never hear someone at a comedy club go, oh, good, a slow joke. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Two Jews walk into a bar. Hey. <laughs> um, tomorrow I have a big meeting over at uh, Paramount. Uh, or a uh, coffee bean, uh, <laughs> right, right next door. And uh, I'm pitching this new movie, and I'm very excited about it. I want to tell you guys about it. Uh, I'll give you guys the basic idea. Here's the idea. I play an unassuming weatherman who's mistaken for a famous international spy. And the movie's called 40% Chance of Danger. Because <laughs> I'm a weatherman. Um, <laughs> So this is the big scene in the movie where I bust in on these drug smugglers who are smuggling diamonds inside of drugs. <laughs> and, <laughs> I let him have it with the big tagline. So you know like Arnold Schwarzenegger is like, hasta la vista, baby, or, or Clint Eastwood is, go ahead and make my day. This is sort of like the signature line of the movie. So I have three lines of mine. I'm going to try all three, see which one plays best here in North Hollywood. Because if it plays here, it'll play I'm over there. Uh, <laughs> it's about words when you're a comedian. Um, I have a gift. I have a gift. All right. So here's the first scene. I, I bust in on let him have it. Here's the first line. Here's the first one. Here we go. Well, I hope you brought a monkey, because I'm about to get bananas. <laughs> Okay, so hold your applause till you've heard all of them. Uh, all right, this one's gonna knock your socks off. This is the second one, here we go. This is the second one, here we go. Well, looks like somebody's got a death wish, and I'm gonna grant that wish, cause I'm a big fairy. <laughs> Okay, okay, this third one's gonna blow you away. Here we go, third one, here we go, third one. Hey, the fuck store called. Fuck you. <laughs> I 
think we can all agree, monkey. Um, but you know, uh, being a celebrity like myself, uh, I'm a celebrity, so shut up. Um, I think it's important to take up causes. And uh, again, I read this recently, the latest issue of, of Jugs, that a lot of these cosmetic companies are testing their products out on animals. And yeah, and the thing that concerns me about this is that eventually these animals are released out into the wild and they think they can get by solely on their looks. Uh, they go out on the town with the lipstick and the eyeliner thinking they're God's gift. Well, let me tell you this, Miss Raccoon. Nobody likes a raccoon that looks like a whore. And, let's get the word out. I actually went to the uh, LA Zoo. Uh, LA Zoo is great if you get a chance to go there. And I saw this, I went to the uh, rep reptile exhibit. Did you guys know this, that uh, the anaconda don't want none unless you've got buns, hon. Uh, the, the anaconda. Uh, let's see, what's that, more fun animal facts? All right. Um, how about this? This is a fun one. Did you guys know that dolphins are the, are the only mammals besides humans that have sex for pleasure? And whales are the only mammals that have sex for money. Uh, <laughs> so if you go to SeaWorld, flash a 20, Shamu will blow you. Uh, <laughs> Oh, all right. Oh, you guys love the guitar? Who loves the guitar? Huh? Oh, boy. Oh. All right, folks. All right. So uh, we're going to play a little guitar here. Um, let's see. What if somebody's like, no, don't play the guitar? It's right on the floor. The pick's on the floor? Well, I don't see it, ma'am. <laughs> it's my special. Why don't you pick it up for me? <laughs> Special's ruined, everybody. The pick fell on the floor. That's the point. Is this? All right. So here's the thing. I I, I do a lot of charity work, like I said, being a celebrity, and I actually, uh, again, stop laughing when I say that. Uh, but I do a lot of work, and one of the things I do I uh, I work with kids, and they are the future. And um, <laughs> I like one person in the back just applauded kids. Kids, that, no, still, still not gonna. You know, I was talking to Gandhi the other day, and you know, um, <laughs> Steve Gandhi. I went to high school with him. Um, <laughs> anyways, I started an organization called uh, Comedy with a Purpose, or uh, QAP. And, <laughs> Listen, what, what we do is uh, I go out to local high schools, I play classic rock songs, put positive lyrics behind the songs so the kids can not only rock and roll, but they can also... <laughs> they can also learn something. So I want to do a couple of these songs for you. These are classic rock songs, positive lyrics. Listen up, because you can learn something too. Let me just make sure this is in tune here. Hold on. <laughs> Appears to be in tune. Um, so again, classic rock song, positive lyrics. Listen up, because you could learn something too. So here we go. Do 
your mother. Don't patronize me. Um, I'm not even going to do the last one. Aww. All right, I'll do it. Um, <laughs> song is, uh, I don't want to say it's sort of like the, uh, it's like blowing in the wind, but uh, it's probably a little better uh, <laughs> than Bob Dylan's blowing in the wind. So uh, it's probably going to define our generation, and you guys are the first to witness it. So, um, so I want to do it for you guys right now. So uh, again, let me make sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm outraged by you, I'm outraged by me, I'm outraged by people who don't shake it twice after they pee, I'm outraged by Bush, Clinton, Trump, and Obama, Washington, Jefferson, and especially your mama, I'm outraged, I'm outraged, I'm outraged. I'm outraged at 789. I'm outraged by 11. I'm outraged that all good dogs get to go to heaven. I'm outraged by whoever shot Biggie and whoever shot Tupac. I'm outraged in Rochambeau that paper still beats rock. I'm outraged. I'm outraged. I'm outraged. Outraged by something, sir, right here. What outrages you? What are you outraged by? Politics, specifically what? Oh, oh politics. All right. I'm outraged by politics. I think that they're all dicks. I think we should have voted for a woman. We should have elected a chick. Um, who else? Man, uh, let's see. Oh, right there, man. What are you outraged by? Car repair. I'm outraged by car repair, car repair costs. This guy waited for 30 years in his Chevy Nova, and he almost lost, but now he's as in love. He's in love. He's in love. He's in love. What else? One more. One more. Yeah. What? Oh God damn it! <laughs> I'm outraged by parking tickets. Who the fuck do they think they are? <laughs> Everybody, come on, everybody on this. Here we go. I'm on the race. I'm on the race. I'm on the race. I'm on the race. Here we go. How in Swahili, everybody on this. Oh, you T R A T D. That is how it's spelled. If you don't believe me, well, you can rot in hell. I'm on the race. Everybody, I'm on the race. I'm outraged! I'm outraged! I'm outraged! I'm outraged! I'm outraged! I'm outraged! I am
you guys very much. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, do be careful leaving here tonight. Crime's certainly a big issue here in uh, the NoHo, as I call it. Uh, you guys know this, right? When you're walking to your car, you're supposed to carry your uh, keys like this. You ever hear that? <laughs> That way when the criminal approaches, you say, there you go, the black Honda Civic. <laughs> I'm always worried I'll pull the wrong thing in my pocket. I'll be digging through my pocket. I'll pull like a tube of chapstick. Ha ha! There you go. <laughs> you don't want to get chapped lips. Yeah. I was reading on the side of this as warning. Keep out of eyes. Who's ever jumped to that conclusion? Like, boy, this is great on my lips. I wonder if it'll cure my glaucoma, though. Hello. <laughs> Sometimes I'll do this if I'm in a really dangerous neighborhood. I'll pretend I'm talking on my phone. You ever do that? But I really sell. You really got to sell. So if I see somebody suspicious, I'll be like, hey, police, how you doing? <laughs> Bitch, if anybody tried to mug me right now. Oh, Batman's on the other line. <laughs> Oh, man, I, um, let's see. So my wife always worries about getting murdered. Uh, yeah. I'll let that hang there. Uh, no, because she watches all those murder shows like Dateline and Forensic Files. So now I feel like I got to watch them just to stay one step ahead of her. You know? It's like taking notes. Oh, arsenic is untraceable. Mm -hmm. There was one lady, she killed two of her husbands by putting arsenic in their jello. And first of all, if you're getting jello for dessert, you're already dead. Uh, <laughs> on a day right there. Right. No, but she loves watching those murder specials, so she's always paranoid about stuff. So sometimes if we're in a dangerous neighborhood, what we'll, we'll do is I'll have her run ahead of me, and I'll chase her. <laughs> and that way if there's any murders in me, all right, they already got that covered. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll see you next one, though, buddy. Yeah, okay. Now, you know if you get mugged or jumped, you're not supposed to yell help, right? You're supposed to yell... Fire, right? Because people love fires. Uh, get your Jack Johnson CD. Uh, I think if you're a guy and you get mugged, I think you yell rape. Just to make it really uncomfortable for the mugger, you know? He's like, give me your money. Rape! Well, I don't want to rape you. I wonder if this will interrupt the special. Nah, eh, probably not. No. <laughs> Why don't you guys hold them back? <laughs> that's I, that's my, a guy who goes to my wife's bar. His, his, his nickname is Sleepy Joe. Uh, <laughs> It's like the most awkward part of the joke, too. I'm saying rape really loudly, and he's like, oh, oh, oh. All right. About to wrap it up. Should I finish that joke, or what do you think? Yeah. All right, let's wrap. So again, let's go back to when we'll green screen it. Uh, I think if you're a, you're a guy and you get mugged, I think you should rape. Just to make it really uncomfortable for the mugger. You know? It's like, give me your money, rape! Well, I don't want to rape you. Whatever, dude, take it. Is this what you want? Go for it! Go for it! I don't want to! He runs away, you're chasing him with your pants down. Come back here! You promised! Uh, <laughs> No, uh, I'm going to say this, and this comes from the heart. You know, comedy to me is a lot like the art of making love. You learn by watching other people. And um, I got to get going now, you guys. And um, I want you to know um, I'm never going to forget you. I walked up here tonight to a room full of strangers, but I'm leaving here with a room full of friends. And, I just think about all the great times we had here tonight. You know, it seems like just 57 and a half minutes ago.
Drop your bottle. What's your name? Robert. Here we go. Sleepy Joe. Thank you guys very much, my name's Robert. Thank you guys. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow I have a big meeting over at uh, Paramount, uh, or uh, Coffee Bean, uh, <laughs> right, right next door. And uh, I'm pitching this new movie, and I'm very excited about it. I want to tell you guys about it. Uh, I'll give you guys the basic idea. Here's the idea. I play an unassuming weatherman who's mistaken for a famous international spy. And the movie's called 40% Chance of Danger. Because <laughs> I'm a weatherman. Um, <laughs> So this is the big scene in the movie where I bust in on these drug smugglers who are smuggling diamonds inside of drugs. <laughs> and, <laughs> I let them have it with the big tagline. So you know like Arnold Schwarzenegger is like, hasta la vista, baby, or, or Clint Eastwood's go ahead and make my day. This is sort of like the signature line of the movie. So I have three lines of mine. I'm going to try all three, see which one plays best here in North Hollywood. Because if it plays here, it'll play I'm over there. Uh, <laughs> it's about words when you're a comedian. Uh, I have a gift. I have a gift. All right. So here's the first scene. I, or I bust in on, let him have it. Here's the first line. Here's the first one. Here we go. Well, I hope you brought a monkey. Because I'm about to get bananas. <laughs> Okay, so hold your applause till you've heard all of them. Uh, all right, this one's gonna knock your socks off. This is the second one, here we go. This is the second one, here we go. Well, looks like somebody's got a death wish, and I'm gonna grant that wish, because I'm a big fairy. <laughs> Okay, okay, this third one's gonna blow you away. Here we go, third one, here we go, third one. Hey, the fuck store called. Fuck you. <laughs> I think we can all agree, monkey. Um, 